Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Guess what we're going to be talking about? Market updates. Everybody's favorite topic, especially at the end of the year. A lot of people, they are worried about it. It's obviously splashed all over the news. New York Times, Wall Street Journal, they're all writing articles about it. This is the December market update. First of all, let's talk about rents. As we do, we cover the three boroughs that matter to you most, Staten Island and the Bronx. I'm sorry, but first let's start in Manhattan. First of all, Rents are on fire. In all three boroughs, we're gonna talk about Manhattan first, they match their all-time high of $3,200. So if you're looking to rent your place out, don't worry about it. Obviously, this is a lagging indicator, so this is takes 30 days to compile all the information, but as of right now, rent, and it's not, let's also be clear, it's not the greatest time to put your home on the market. It's between Thanksgiving and Christmas, and then right after it starts snowing. So it really depends. Obviously, rents are gonna adjust going through this into January and February. So rents are at an all-time high. Second of all, sales. Everybody cares about sales. They dropped at the fastest pace on record at 2.5% to $1.1 million, which is the lowest level since 2015. Let me say that again. The sales price dropped at the fi fastest price on record to 2.5%, and I would say that's not obviously the ideal scenario, and this is why. More than 2,000 homes hit the market, and that's a 21% increase from over last year. That's a lot of homes. Economics 101, you have more supply, less demand, which we're gonna talk about in the amount of recorded sales. That's the thing is that over the last eight years, it's been extremely bullish, very emotional, barely any objectivity of why people were purchasing apartments at the high prices. Obviously the luxury marketplace, you have a massive influx of inventory coming on, and then that started trickling down. And we're seeing it right now is that when you see sky high pricing, it's like anything else. You, you, people get bullish on a company and then that drives the stock up and then people say, ooh, it might be a little too high right now, and then they start selling it off. And it's the reverse in real estate right now, which is everyone is putting their home on the market, 2,000 new homes at the market, that's a lot. So you have more, in more inventory, let's talk about recorded sales. It continued to drop. So you have all this inventory, especially the Upper East Side, Upper West Side. Upper East Side has had, and the Upper West Side, have had double digit percentage increases in the amount of inventory. However, the recorded sales continued to drop 14% annually to just under 900 sales. So if you look at that math and you're looking at 2,000 homes hit the market and there were less than 900 recorded sales, that's a lot. That's a big difference. That's, that's more than 50% more homes entering as opposed to, obviously we're not gonna see a 50% decrease. That has nothing to do with the correlation in price. But what you can see is you have to price it correctly if you wanna compete with those 2,000 new homes. This is why price cuts are higher than ever at 18% the highest share on record. So if you're in and or looking to sell your home, there's three options. Actually, I'll talk about it at the end. Let's talk about Brooklyn. Rents rose, again, fastest pace uh, since 2016. The most was in Northwest Brooklyn, and the amount of cuts in rentals was 3.4%. So in other words, you're having a lot of homes hit the market for rent. It could be a multitude of reasons. It could be, well, I'm not gonna sell because I can't get the price, so I'm gonna rent it out. The amount of tenants that are actually moving in, there's, it, it's actually hard to actually pinpoint that because this isn't the best rental season. It's usually April to about June, you know, right around there, and then pricing skyrockets a little bit in the fall, but not right around now. So this is a very interesting statistic is that Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens, which we'll talk about next, the rental prices are at, are at an all-time high. Pricing on the sales side, 1%, that's it. Slightly up in Brooklyn, and the most is actually in South Brooklyn at 4%. The amount of inventory, this is crazy, the amount of inventory continued to climb and it's at 31% more homes hit the market this year than last year. 31% more, that's a lot. That's a lot of people that are either making moves, they're bullish about the market, or they need to sell. Those are really the, th the three categories. There's not a lot of people that are saying, oh, this is fantastic. The, you're, you're seeing, when you have 2,000 homes hit the market, like in Manhattan, and then you have under 
900 recorded sales. It's very similar in Brooklyn. The share of the homes with price cuts rose to 16%. So price cuts, obviously, if you're at a million, going down to 950. There's a lot of down arrows. The best example is we were shopping for three bedrooms with a client on the Upper West Side. They priced it at a, they priced it where it should go. They received multiple offers, and then the owner said, ah, I think it's a little underpriced. Rose the price, and now it's been sitting for three months. That is the opposite of what should happen. When you get multiple offers, you bid that up so you get the price that you wanted in that price increase. Owner, there is a tenant in there, so it's not that big of a deal. However, that's something to think about is that when you get multiple bid situation, when there are not multiple bid situation, unless it's underpriced, you take the offer or you take the best qualified candidate, especially if it's a co-op. In this in our example, it was a condo, so it's it's not as bad. Queens, let's move on to there. Everyone's favorite. If you're taking the Long Island Railroad and you're looking north, it kind of looks like Miami because there's so many cranes. There's so many buildings, luxury condos, luxury rentals, and that's essentially where it came from. Rentals reached an all-time high, increasing 1.2%. Obviously, a lot of that is being bolstered by all this new inventory. Queens never had that. It went from Manhattan to Brooklyn to Queens. Landlords, they had the, this is actually a very shocking statistic, is that rental price cuts, which you, you're not really seeing in Manhattan and Brooklyn, but rental price, price cuts was up 20% from last year. If it's at 3,000 and the landlord is not getting it for rent, I, we have a, a couple of places that we're, we're considering, should we sell it, should we, should we put it on the market for rent? Doesn't really matter because, to be honest, if you're in Queens, the rental price cuts is up 21%. Last thing I'm gonna say. So prices continue to rise. That Again, that's probably new development. That's also probably just the, the, the bull figure of moving out to Queens. It's very consistent and, and reliable as much as you can be in a subway train that's going across the East River. Obviously the L train shutdown, that's gonna be a big deal. Everyone's moving back into Manhattan. I have a couple of people that their job is moving them to Brooklyn, so they actually have to consider, do I move to Brooklyn, do I not move to Brooklyn? Because the transportation, it's gonna be a total nightmare on the L train shutdown. With Queens, you obviously have HQ2, which is Amazon moving out there. I don't know how many jobs they've announced that are actually gonna be hired now. They're building out the headquarters. This is what I have to say. There's three options, okay? Obviously for rent, a little bit different. I wanna see where that goes. That, that that's it, it seems very unrealistic right now because typically rental prices go down, then sales go down. But right now, sales prices are going down because everyone is bullish about the marketplace and then rentals are, I think they're peaking. I, they should be peaking because you can't go eight years of just continuously raising up in pricing. So these are the three sellers right now. These are the three options you have. And I was just having this discussion yesterday. This is what you could do. Number one, price cut. It's the most obvious one. If the marketplace is not accepting your price right now, you have a price cut. What is it? This is the best way to, to actually think about it. So if there are no offers, ever at any time, you're 10% minimum overpriced, okay? 10 to 15%, sometimes it's upwards of 20%. Where a broker bought the listing because they said, oh yeah, no, 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 I can get it, I can get that price, even though they have no justification in the marketplace to get that, but they got the exclusive so they could look cool, but unfortunately their expectations are not aligned with the price. So the first one is dropping the price, that's easy. The second one is you actually take it off the market in the next, Say, have one more open house, take it off the market for Christmas and New Year's, allow the winter to pass, and you put it back on in the spring. This is my thinking right now, is that all of these, all this inventory that's not gonna be absorbed is either gonna be price reduction, taken off the market, or the third one, which is rented out. I would put it on in the spring. That's what I, that's what I would do. I wouldn't put it on in January. I just got had a call yesterday with a seller, and they're listed with someone, no offers, and actually, no, they had one low ball offer. And I said, no, it's overpriced. There's nothing to justify it in that area at that size, even if, even if it's beautiful, and even if it's your home, and it's incredible, and we all love it, there's nothing a buyer will say, actually, I wanna pay that overpriced, even though it's not in Gramercy, it's not in Chelsea, it's not downtown, it's more in Midtown, it's along Broadway, it's a little bit different of a location. So price cut, put it on the spring, take it off, put it on the spring, or rent it out or you continue living there, or you leave it vacant. Those other two last options, a lot of people don't wanna do, okay? There's other things to actually move your property. 
is what's the feedback? Is it the renovations? Is it the painting? Is there too many things in there? Is it there's there's too many homes in that building on the market? Are you competing with the atelier? You know, one bedroom on the 34th floor, or the 27th floor is pretty much going to be the same thing because they all have the same reno renovation. That's what you could do. If you guys have any questions, give me a call. Charles at Botenston is my email. And looking back on this, that is the statistic of the month. 2,000 new homes hit the market and only 886 total sales. Doesn't justify the price. I am very looking forward to, if that's even English, very looking forward to, I'm, I'm looking forward to the market port for next month. Again, any questions, let us know. Have an amazing day, touch you soon.